in order to discuss contemporary political issues, we must first discuss some economic theory in order to explain the logic of our perspective. I want to especially begin with a lecture I listened to recently by Hans Hermann Hoppe called What Must Be Done that he gave at the Mises Supporters Summit in Newport Beach in 1997. Hopp begins with a theoretical explanation of human history by asking three questions. Why is there a society? Why do people cooperate? And why is there peaceful cooperation and not permanent war among mankind? Then he goes on to say, Austrians, and in particular Misesians, emphasize the fact that we do not need to assume anything like sympathy or love for other people. Self-interest, that is to prefer more over less, that is entirely sufficient to explain this phenomenon of cooperation. Men cooperate because they are able to recognize that production under division of labor is more productive than self-sufficient isolation. Imagine just that we would just withdraw from division of labor and you would immediately recognize that we would be desperately poor and most of mankind would immediately die out. Note what this explanation implies and what it does not imply. It does not imply, of course, that there will be always and without any exception or disturbance nothing but peace among man. There are always robbers, murderers around and in every society. Someone has to deal with these types. What it does imply is that the Hebesian account of the emergence of peaceful cooperation is fundamentally misconceived. Thomas Hobbes was a philosopher who believed that people would be permanently at each other's throats if it were not for some independent third party, that is the state, of course, to make peace among them. But you notice immediately what kind of construction this is. People are assumed to be bad wolves, and they can be turned into sheep if another third wolf is made to rule above them. Now, if the third party is also a wolf, as obviously he must be, then even if he can make peace among two individuals, this obvious implies that there will be a permanent war between the ruling wolf and the two, two wolves who are now peacefully cooperating with each other. Now, what this implies is something of great importance, that there, uh, that is there must be no state or independent third party in order to have co cooperation between two individuals, uh, which you can also recognize immediately if you just look, for instance, at the international scenery. There exists no such thing as a world government, at least not yet. And still people of different countries peacefully cooperate with each other. You can also take this to be, um, this is a side note, uh, to be anarchy among the different countries. But why is it that we only allow for a couple, a couple hundred countries to exist in the world? Why not allow one country for each individual? Uh, so then you have 7 billion countries, and then it's much more harder to wage war and factions among men of, of different uh, collective areas. Now, now the, the last great um, important note here is that even out of the greatest social chaos, always peaceful cooperation emerges again. And Hop goes on to say, what this boils down to is peaceful cooperation between humans is a perfectly natural and constantly and re-emerging phenomenon. And out of this cooperation, then equally natural and equally driven by self-interest comes capital formation, money, the medium of exchange, and then the div division of labor ultimately expands to the entire globe. And likewise, money, that is commodity money, also becomes a worldwide used commodity money. Then material living standards increase. For everyone and based on higher material living standards and ever more elaborate superstructure of non-material goods that is civilization of science arts literature and so forth can be developed and maintained hop continues but something can and obviously has happened that disrupts and distorts or even des derails this normal self-interest driven development and this is of course the state which hop defines rather abstractly as a compulsory territorial monopolist of protection or a monopolist of defense and the provision and enforcement of law and order then the next part of that lecture hop goes on to discuss the question of how does the state originate 
stating that law and order or the protection of property is not identical with state law, state order, and state protection. Um, and then he goes on into more detail about that. And coming back around, I think that it is very hard for someone who watches mainstream news every day to learn theoretical explanations of human history. As Michael Malice says, the mainstream news is factual but not always truthful. As well, people will be told and fed the relevant information in order to become a proprietor of an agenda that is why the mainstream media produces either Democrats or Republicans. It is the source that feeds minds rather than promotes individual ideological development of freedom. I do not care for personalities, so I will not name this person, but a person was being interviewed on a mainstream news outlet, and when the interviewer criticized America's democracy for being tainted with the slightest amount of corruption, this person being interviewed switched their tone to becoming the most superior defendant of America by stating how we need love to bring all Americans back together again. I do not doubt that this person is sincere in their claim, but I doubt that they have any intellectual superiority than a mere child does. As you can see, the weapon used to threaten, imprison, and murder can be labeled uh, weapons of love or love utilities, but this is a facade for a child to be misconceived by. No free-thinking adult. I do not doubt that some sick evil people in this world love their power, but this type of love has no place in the civilized society. And when the most elitist corporatists sit on people's televisions and say, all we need is more love, I think that it is safe to say that they are disconnected from the circumstantial realities of what a vast amount or even the majority of people in the United States are living like. The reason why the corporate press will always be in support of welfare policies is because the humanitarian instincts to help people uh, uh, will help politicians get into office and in direct compensations the cathedral as a whole will benefit. But as long as people cannot think freely about how welfare redistribution uses the means of physically removing the property and income from one person by the state to give to another person, then it will always sound like the good thing to do. And as long as people cannot think freely about how this form of income redistribution may hurt the 1%, but in reality will hurt the middle class Americans the most, then they will think this is the right thing to do. But this perspective comes from learning and understanding economics. That is why the Austrians from the Mises Institute are so great. Because the Austrians are dogmatic in some areas, the areas that apply to the laws of economics. But they are so humble in understanding that increases, uh, the increase, increasing pieces of paper in a society does not make a society richer. And the mainstream economists are intellectual idiots who are all around confused. Although this sounds like an impossible revolution to undermine the governments of the world, the only way is through changing ideology, to read more than you watch. The cathedral of the corporate press will give you a political drama better than any of your favorite reality TV shows, but that show will be on again next season. The ideas that are bulletproof and stand for decades, centuries, and even millennia are what will make your life better, smarter, and stronger. I promise you. Thank you for listening.